welcome to our special tournament edition of Friday Night Sports Extra. It's summer. Nick and Dennis keeping it real for 14 years. Yeah, I guess I have to put this on. I'm Nick, Keith Oso, yeah. Allison Leap. Celebrating 30 years of coverage. This is Friday Night Sports Extra, presented by Zbart. Welcome into Friday Night Sports Extra. If you can't smell at home, well, I'm sorry because <laughs> Longhorn Barbecue is here. Man, this stuff smells good. No guarantees we're going to make it through the show without <laughs> digging in, guys. Yeah, you kind of stole the words right out of my mouth. It's always tough to focus in here when we got the cheerleaders and the great set. Today, it's the smells, the great set, and we got some friends from 700 ESPN HS, so we got a lot of fun for you tonight on Friday Night Sports Extra. We do have some fun. We're going to have to address the dress code here. I said jerseys. I thought that people were going to wear local jerseys, but we have two non-locals on the show. We're working them in. Maybe by next year we'll get some Seattle stuff on these guys. I doubt it, but maybe. Now, we, we start tonight at Joey Stadium because we actually had a rivalry game. Ferris hasn't scored a point this year. Will it be tonight against their rival, Lewis and Clark? Ooh, look at that moon. Ooh, Ferris with the ball. They haven't scored, so they break out the trickeration. Bunker to Brock. Hook and ladder to Man, but sniffed down by... Lewis and Clark, good pickup. Later in the first, Saxon's threatening. Bunker back to pass, but Camden Bixton takes him down for the sack. That drive stalls. Saxon's later on the punt. You're going to notice a lot of not a lot of points being scored in this game. This is going to be uh, Kyle Sean for the Tigers. Nice little move there, but he fumbles the football. Saxon's recover. Will this be it? Will this be the time Ferris scores? They're trying to capitalize, but this is all defense, people. Zachary Monosmith with a big hit in the flat. But look what happens after the cameras leave. Ferris scores, and it's good enough to win the game. The Ferris Saxons get the 3 to nothing win over LC in the rivalry game. The early game at Joe Albee Stadium, Meade and Rogers got to get the onions going early so everything else doesn't get overpowered by them. Good job of the tailgating. Pirates looking for third down, uh, third win in a row, but they fumble deep in their own territory. Meade is going to recover, and they would capitalize. Give it over to Trevor Sen on the pitch. He finds the corner and takes it in. Meade with the lead. Second quarter, though, Pirates on the attack. Cole Schaefer hooks up with Conrad Weeks. Check out this move on the sideline. Little dead leg right here. Bang! Back into the inside. And he takes it into the end zone. Ties the game for Rodgers. But Panthers were too much tonight. Peyton Lokes is going to hit EJ Bade in stride and see you later. 65 yards for the touchdown for Meade. And the Panthers pull away late. They win this one 51 to 21. If you listen to Keith, Dennis, and Rick on Patch and Luke and Snow, so you might know Fabric Store Mike, one of the best callers. Here he is in the flesh. Check him out on Twitter. Mike Crawford, MYK, some of the best photos in Spokane. He's a big fan of GSL football. What do you say we go to the Valley and check in on Shadle and CV? They got the dogs ready to go in this one, and oh, that was probably the best thing that they had going at CV is this was a blowout. 35 nothing Bears gauge. Connell punches this one in. Add an on. How about this, though? Nice shutdown here by CV. It's Griffin Bacon earned some BBQ with that one. Shada with the stop later. It was all CV. Braden Anderton blows this play up as Central Valley goes on to a big win, 45 to nothing at home. Last night over at Albi, the first of our doubleheaders, Gonzaga Prep and Mount Spokane dueling off the Bullpups. First play from scrimmage, Liam Bell. He's it to Nick Johnson. You're not going to catch him. That's a 80-yard hookup is G Prep. Jumps out on top, and they roll to this one. Staying undefeated, 49 to 21. Second game earlier in the night, North Central taking on U High. The Titans already up a whole lot in this one. Logan O'Neill fakes the handoff and fires it to Griffin Thorson. A fingertip grab. That's good for six. U High on top, 37 to nothing as they cruise 59 to seven. 
Are these Boston baked beans? These things even allowed around these parts? I don't know, Patriots? I, okay, that doesn't matter. Let's head out to Post Falls. Tailgate going on there as well. These moms not messing around. Pulled pork on the menu tonight. There's also some football opening quarter. Tum water on the move, but not for long. Ryan Pope just throws it up and Dosh and Tram picks that thing off the back of the end zone. That ball belongs to Post Falls. And Sue in possession, Mark Haynes fires it over the middle to Breston Bogard. Leaves everybody in his desk as the Trojans, they strike first. The second quarter we go now. Pote with the pitch to Jared Walker, and he just can't hang on to it. Butterfingers and Gunner Scortino scoops that thing up. He's headed the other way as he scurries in for six points. Post falls, preserves homecoming easily. 62-7, to seven, the final. Okay, in case you're thirsty, plenty to wash the barbecue down with no lights, no issue, because Red Bull, hey, gives you wings. Lake City hosting Tumwater, third quarter, the visitors on the doorstep, and Jared Barrett, nobody in his path to still use that dramatic hurdle. That TD extends his team's lead to two scores. The T-Wolves, they need an answer, and they get one. Matt Duke connects with Austin McMaster, and the Zen Master on that one brings Lake City within seven points. Final quarter now, third and goal. They need to stop Spencer Dowers. With the play action, then just tosses it to is that guy Paul Bunyan, six foot five, Kate Otten. Just seems unfair. Tom Water hangs on in this one to beat Lake City 35 to 21. I'll tell you what, the new heroes here at KXOY, Chuck and Tyler from Longhorn Barbecue, and they 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 don't promise, but they say it's possible this could be at my house for the Seahawk game on the weekend. So we'll see if that happens. Probably not. Let's head out to the Valley, West Valley taking on <laughs> sorry, West Valley taking on Moscow. And that sign wasn't very nice. We're scoreless to the first. Eagles on the move, but Hunter White is picked off by Bryson Bennett. That's not very nice either. He returns it. And Moscow is in business, but they wouldn't capitalize. Second quarter right gets a little payback going deep nice over the shoulder catch by Tevin Duke he's down inside the five great concentration by the receiver and the Eagles would punch it in all of the Wildcat Johnny Sage sounds like a bad guy in Mortal Kombat he takes it in West Valley goes on to win this one at home 21 to 7 across the valley to keep those so field we go Sandpoint in town homecoming congratulations to the Queen late in the first half Mighty Knights would take the lead Dante Clayton hits Tanner Jacobs in the end zone East Valley with the lead into the half. Different story in the second half. Sandpoint threatening. Fourth and long quarterback Davin Norris trying to get it with his legs and watch and listen to this. Oh, what a hit right there. They have to settle for the field goal because Devontae Gorman with the big hit. Game tied. Knights with the ball. Snap gets by Clayton. Picks up. Goes deep, but he's picked off by Clayton Fournier. Sandpoint is in business, and the very next play, they get in. Norris goes all huck it, chuck it, football. Wyatt McCormick Cox, the greatest name in our area. He's there for the touchdown. Sandpoint pulls away in the second half, 40 to 13. When you tune into Friday Night Sports Extra, you see Sarah, Keith, and I, but you never see the stars behind the scenes like our photog, Kellen, right here. When you have a luscious beard eating barbecue, you got to keep it clean, right? Oh, thank you, sir. Mm. Oh. me too. I'm going to try and do highlights from a great game in Cheney as they were hosting Sunnyside in this one. They weren't getting barbecue, though. They were getting coffee before this game. Not a good start for Cheney. Sunnyside comes out of the gates fast. Fernando Sid Reyes gets loose. Only green ahead. Put seven on the board for the visitors later in the quarter. Cheney tightening things up. Cameron Hart, the heartbreaker. My goodness, big time hit. That's a turnover on downs. Blackhawks in a 14 nothing hole. I'm doing this with food in my mouth, and he's doing this with multiple spins. Ty Graham to the house. My goodness, I think we might see this later in the top place as Cheney comes back to win this one, 28-20. So we talked about the photogs that help us out. Well, this whole crew also helps us out, take pictures on 700 ESPN High School, and then they tweet about it. So let's check out the tweet tonight. Hashtag FNSC as we take a look here. And check that out. Colfax and NWC. Shauna Ricks, thanks for sending that great picture in. That's what it's all about here. Next up here, check this out. We're getting some love with the hashtag FNSC. Thank you so much, the Lancers Cheerleaders. Great looking sign there. We'll take any signs that you guys make. And how about Jason here? A second TD catch by McCormick Cox. Puts uh, Sandpoint up 20 to 13. Again, if you want to be on here next week, hashtag FNSC. And thanks to these guys at 700 ESPN High School. Kind of like this. Hashtag FNSC. Good job by Liberty paying attention. Tonight, tailgate night. Here's what you can expect next week.
That's right. Reardon's band's going to come in. We're going to play some music. We're going to have a good time. But for now, we're going to eat some more barbecue. we got more highlights coming up next on Friday Night Sports Extra.